Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you Strand Beeston. Now these are wind-powered artificial life. These are miniature versions of the kinetic structures created by the artist and engineer Theo Jansen. Now what's amazing about these creatures is they appear to walk all on their own. There's no battery or other source of power in these whatsoever. Now this one here is called the rhinoceros. This one is slower moving, but it's a beast. And then this one I call the spider. It's just a generic strand beast. So some of these models that he's created, he was even able to create some that can sense when the tide is coming in, the water gets too close to it, it can turn and go the other direction. There's even one that can anchor itself to the ground if it senses that a storm is coming. What's neat about these is how simple yet complex they are. They have very simple moving parts made of just simple triangles and gears. But what's amazing about it is that they appear to look like living creatures when they're all put together. Jansen said that I make skeletons that are able to walk on the wind. Over time, these skeletons have become increasingly better at surviving the elements, such as storms and water. And eventually I want to put these animals out in herds on the beaches so they will live their own lives. So all you need to do is give them a little wind power. You can use a fan or you can just blow on them. What's really cool about the rhinoceros one is that no matter which way your fan is or no matter which way the wind is blowing on it, it's always gonna walk in the same direction. For example, if my fan is over here, turn it on, and it actually walks towards the fan. So it's kind of weird. It seems like it should be getting blown away from it, but it walks into the wind. So cool. Looks like a crab walking. And then if I bring my fan over here, it still keeps going that way. Even if you're above it, it goes that way. So no matter which way you're going, these veins are angled so that it's always gonna walk in this direction. So the way this works is these veins can only catch the wind coming from this direction. So it's always gonna make it spin in this direction. So up here, it can catch the wind but on the bottom, it can't catch the wind because they're angled now this direction. And so they don't catch it as much. So this way it will catch it, this way it won't. But from the back, if you're coming from this direction, now it can catch it from this direction and make it spin this way, but it can't catch it on the top. So on this side, it can catch it on the top, 
On this side, it can catch it on the bottom. So no matter what, it always makes it spin in this direction. And then same thing from the top. From the top, it'll catch it from this direction. From the bottom, it'll catch it from this direction. So it always is going to spin the same direction. And then the strand beast, or the spider-like one, it comes from the side to make it go. So you can even be coming from the side or even straight on, almost straight on, and it'll still come this direction. And even if you're coming this direction, it still goes the same direction. For me, this type of engineering is very interesting. It's a crossover between art and engineering, but it's amazing how often art can actually help with engineering in the future. Now, I think Leonardo da Vinci is one of the best examples of how art can actually advance scientific progress. For example, in Leonardo's paintings, he wanted the paintings to look realistic, and he actually noticed the difference between veins and arteries. He noticed how some of them were bringing blood away from the heart, and then some were bringing blood to the heart. In order to draw them correctly, he had to do scientific research to actually figure out what was going on. Being an artist helped him to notice small, minute details that may be overlooked by the untrained eye. In fact, I just saw a study where they took a group of dermatologists and they asked those dermatologists to go study art in a museum. And after studying the art, they found that those dermatologists were better able to spot and also describe different types of skin lesions. And there's been other studies that have shown how art can actually help doctors improve their ability to read medical images. In fact, Louis Pasteur's training in drawing portraits is one of the reasons in why he was able to understand and describe chirality. Chirality is the way in which molecules can either be right-handed or left-handed. They twist one direction versus another direction. If he wasn't trained in the arts of looking at images and how there's a right side and a left side, he wouldn't have been able to understand that as clearly. So I think these strand beasts are perfect examples of how you can use art and engineering and merge them together and how art can actually further engineering in some cases. To be a scientist and an engineer, you have to be artistic. You have to learn to use different parts of your brain and be creative and think outside of the box. And art and music can actually help you do that. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and check out theactionlab.com if you haven't yet. You can see the Action Lab experiment boxes and experiment book as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.